Okay, the focus actually works. Actually, okay. <laughs> Dude, I am not even messing around here. This works. This works, guys. Uh, I'm not even BSing, this works. Today we're installing the Runcam Wi-Fi Link 2 in one of our FPV drones. So if you're interested in that, this is the video for you. So let's begin. Okay, so we have all our parts here from the Wi-Fi Link 2, including the VTX, the camera, the cables, the antenna, and the screws to actually install this in one of our drones. Now the drone we'll be using today is the SpeedyB Mario 5 Data Cat. This one here is a capable drone. It does have the Walk Snail Moonlight Kit currently on it. And this was a complete build from a frame kit. I've done a full review on this one. If you wanna assemble this one for yourself, I'll leave that video linked above and below so you can take a look at it. Now this is a really good candidate for this actually Wi-Fi Link 2, only because it's so big, there's a lot of space in the back here for this VTX. There's some space in the front. Now this can work for any of your drones as well, but this one seems to be the best one in my fleet. It also has the Speedy B F4 or 5 flight controller here with a nine volt BEC. It actually has the plug as well to plug this straight into the flight controller. We'll see if we can actually utilize this feature today and just avoid all the soldering. It's one of the reasons why I'm doing this right here at the desk versus the bench over there. So we'll see if this will work. Besides that, I do have a 3D printed mount here. And this is a special mount here just for these dual antennas. Besides that, this should be fairly simple. So let's try to get this thing here disassembled, remove the old VTX and camera and see if we can just install the new one here. So let's just remove this top plate, get access to all the electronics and get a better look at what we're looking at here. All right, and this is the last one. Here we go, top plate comes off. Put this to the side. And now I can get a better look at what we're dealing with right here. Now I have better access to it, take a look in there. And yes, there is a plug there for the actual harness right here. Yeah, now I can't see the actual pinouts for the SpeedyB plug right here. But I'm looking at the schematics here for this Wi-Fi Link 2. And on their website, the instruction manual says it goes from nine volt ground TX RX and then ground at S plus and that's two for like the transmitter. I don't have the pinout for this, I can't see it. It's upside down, I would have to rotate the whole thing. And I don't wanna do that. So I'm gonna use my resource here. I have my FPV guidebook and this will show me the pinouts for that plug. As you can see, it says Speedy B F4 or 5 flight controller. And if I match up the provided wire here for the Wi-Fi Link 2, I can see if the colors match. And here is it right here. It says nine volt first, nine volt ground TR. That's what I need, nine volt ground T and R. Nine volt ground, yeah, so that matches up. So according to this one, they're using the F4 or 5 wing. I'm using the F4 or 5 flight controller and I should be able to just plug this straight into this existing flight controller and plug the other end into the Wi-Fi Link 2. So this is a pretty cool resource. I use this all the time when I build drones. This is an FPV guidebook. So I'll leave links to this FPV guidebook down below in case you wanna take a look at it, but it has all the information here for almost all flight controllers, motors, headsets. So in theory, this should work. And you do wanna double check that before you plug it into your flight controller, only because you could technically fry this thing if you have it reverse polarity, or maybe the TX and the RX pad is reversed. So I'm just gonna double check this one more time once I plug it in and see if that works. But based upon this, this should work pretty well. At this point, I just have to remove the old VTX and the camera. All right, there we go. That's removed. All right, let's try to remove the camera on this. This has a camera mount for the Moonlight Kit slash DJI 03. All right, I should just pull this forward. Crazy tight. We'll be using this in a different drone, probably in the future. But now we have a, a base here, a good foundation here to actually install this. So this should be pretty fun. Looks like I'll have to remove the MIPI on this one as well. I hate removing MIPI cables only because the more you do it, there's a higher chance of damaging the MIPI cable. It looks like you have to actually disassemble the two halves and I would rather not do that. Let's see if I can just remove it from the camera instead. That should be the easier way. I'm doing all of this just to avoid routing this 
on top of the flight controller. All right, we have our MIPI cable. I'm gonna try to route this thing back to the front. It's gonna be a nightmare. I got it through and under the ESC, which is good. All right, so you can see exactly where this is gonna reside. So yeah, it's gonna fit right in here. This looks, this looks sick. <laughs> That looks good. I am liking that look. All right, so that wire is through. Camera's in the front here. We're just gonna secure this to the frame. But before I do that, I wanna install the antennas only because there's limited space here. And once I secure this to the frame, I don't know if I'll get access to this UFL connector. Now there's a plate holding it, which is typical of most digital FPV systems. There's a Phillips screwdriver. I'm just gonna remove that bolt that takes off this plate here. And then I'm gonna attach my antennas and I'm gonna fish them through my TPU mount first because it's gonna be a pain in the butt afterwards. Put that through here. Make sure we do this right. We don't wanna damage these connectors. All right, they're both in. Cool, and then we're gonna put the plate back on there. That took like 10 minutes. What the hell? We got the UFL antennas on here, connected, finally. I'm gonna plug the harness in there, and then hopefully it can reach the other one. I guess I'll do it now. This is a long cable, guys. Let's see if I can plug it into the flight controller. It seems to want to go in that way. Is it neat? Oh man, I don't know if it's neat. All right, let's plug this in. See if this works. So I have one end into the flight controller. Look at all this wires, dude. I'm gonna secure it with one of two bolts and see how that works. All right, cool. We have two of them in there. And the VTX is now technically installed. Hope you guys can see that. It's... All right, let's see if I can put this TPU in here. All right. Electrical tape should do the trick. All right, technically that's that. I think we're done here. I'm gonna put the top plate back on, secure this puppy and call it a day. Check that out, looks pretty good. Um, you know what, it would, be, <laughs> it would be smart to just cycle the power and see if it works. I think that would be a smart move if I put the top plate back on. What I'm gonna do though is put the camera back on here and then see if that all bolts up. It's not ideal, I can tell you that right now. It's definitely not ideal. It's in there. Is it perfect? I don't think so. Before I cover it up, I wanna see if this is gonna work. Hopefully the smoke stopper does this thing if it's not correct, but. All right, looks good, looks good, looks good, looks good, looks good. Let's power it up. All right. It works, thank goodness. The fan is quiet. All right, so <laughs> the SpeedyB flight controller is uh, wired up straight for it and that matches up with my FPV guidebook. So that was a good resource. I'm gonna put this stuff back together, put the top plate on and then we should be good to go. That shouldn't take too long, should it? All the bolts lined up, there it is. Mario 5, Wi-Fi link in your FPV drone, no soldering. It did take some while. That's due to the complexity of this uh, frame, but here it is, guys. Anyways, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace. I wasn't gonna do this part, but I figured I'd just do it. You guys deserve it. I'm just gonna start this up and see if it connects to the actual app here and see if I get a picture with this, right? We did all this work. I wanna see if there's a picture. Now, I don't know if this drone here is configured specifically for this VTX or HD, but we'll take a look and see if we get a picture from it anyhow. So uh, what I'm gonna use here today is the dual band wireless USB adapter. This is also provided by uh, Runcam. This is pretty cool. Now there is the potential for a VRX by Runcam and some other manufacturers in the very near future. I don't have access to it right now. Once I do get that, that will allow us to use our FPV goggles to actually view the image on open IPC. But for right now, they have this right here. Other manufacturers have something very similar, like a ground station. Uh, and mine here comes with just the adapter right here. And you have two uh, ports here for an antenna. This one here comes with the uh, USB-C hub. This is almost like an OTG cable here. And that goes straight into your phone. Here's your two antennas. It's as simple as just 
Let's get this off. Screw in these antennas here. There you go. Now here's your USB-C right here, or USB-A actually. And that goes into your hub right here. This part here goes right into here. Perfect. Now to make this thing here work, you need a special app. The one I've used before in the past was the FP View app. This one is a, a older version, 0.19. And the one to recommend for this one here is the Pixel Pilot. And that one has some features. I haven't used it yet, but from what I've seen, it's pretty good. That's the one I would recommend for right now. We'll talk about that in a little bit later. But let's fire up that app, start that up right here. So let's see if I can just plug it straight in and see if that works. All right, so it popped up here and I have two options here. I can use either the FP View app or the Pixel Pilot. It doesn't really matter. They're based on the same infrastructure or base foundation. So as you see, they look very similar, uh, but I'm gonna use the Pixel Pilot because it has more features that I can use here. Select that. All right, let's power on the drone and see if it connects. Although it has this fan, I'm gonna provide some additional air to this as well. This is not being powered. I can I can already see that. And that's holy crap. I have an image. I don't see a light on this. Dude, there it is. OSD and everything. <laughs> so it works. It works. Dude, I thought it would have to power this up, but I guess the USB C has no power for my phone here. And this is not set up for HD, so the, you can see the OSD menu is off-centered, but I have battery voltage, uh, link quality, everything. That is sick, dude. I can turn this towards me, I guess. I mean, that image is pretty good. Holy crap. What do you guys think? That image is good. Now, I don't have the settings on this to know what's the settings on this actual camera here. I'm gonna prop this up a little bit. It really is an active, fan because I can hear the fan ramping up a little bit there. So, okay, this obviously came from Runcam and it's already set up. This is kind of what we wanted where you just plug something in and it works. No messing around going into your settings. You can see the CPU temperature going up, obviously it's getting hotter. Um, but the cool thing about this one here is that, now before I even do that, honestly guys, to make this whole thing work, if it wasn't set up correctly, they want you to be on channel, let's see here, 161 and using H.265. That's the, the actual file format here. Uh, I think that's already set. I can check and see. See, it says 161, that's what they want. And you can change that. Let's see here, what's good. Bandwidth, that looks good. I haven't messed with this app in a long time. OSD, that's for other stuff. I don't need the OSD because I have um, MSP OSD. Your key, which is fine. Your recording, can I record? Now, the cool thing about this one here, guys, we'll take this for a flight here. Typically, you can't fly with this. If you're flying FB, you wanna be in the goggles, all right? And you guys seen my video, I made a full video showing you how you can convert this to an image in your goggles, and it can get to an HDMI source. And to your goggles, there's some inherent latency with that, but it does work. Um, there's no, FPV goggles yet and the VRX isn't released yet. That's gonna be probably released in the next week or two. But what I really wanted, as you guys probably heard in my first video when this first came out or the first version came out was that I wanted to just use my cell phone as the actual goggles. And that's kind of possible now with this app right here. I think, I don't know if they heard me or not. As you can see on the top left, it says VR mode. And can I turn that on? Boom, VR mode. And now this can be used as a goggle. You're like, how is this beneficial to me? And I have a little trick up my sleeve, guys. This is a VR goggles. This thing is cheap. They made them at multiple manufacturers. This is just one I saw on Amazon. And this is how you can convert your, well, it comes with a remote. This is how you can convert your phone to a FPV or VR goggles. I'm unboxing it here for the first time. And this was my intention all along. And all you do is put your phone in this and you can see it opens up right here. You can see it here. You have two diopters. You put your phone in here and each image on the screen goes to each side. And that gives you a VR goggles or an FPV goggles. Now, that was not available in the first app. And I actually thought about returning this to Amazon because I was like, well, 
if they're not gonna design this, then that's not gonna work. Because this thing has this little dongle, I don't know if it's gonna work, but it's worth a try, right? Then I don't need a goggles. I don't need a VRX or anything. Let's see if I can put this in here. The only problem is my phone might change. Let's just see if I can see it quickly. I'm curious. All right, so there's a double image. There is some stuff you can adjust here, obviously, to focus. Okay, the focus actually works. Actually, okay. <laughs> Dude, I am not even messing around here. This works. This works, guys. Uh, I'm not even BSing, this works. So the issue was having, I had this issue before when the HD Zero goggles first dropped, I was seeing double image. It takes a while for your brain to adjust, to merge the two images together in your brain. It's your brain, the image is good here. So this works, I can fly with this. I just gotta find a way to mount this. Do I dare mount in the, on top here? I gotta find a way to mount this and then we should be good to go. This is sick, guys. So anyways, this all works. You can see the image in here. Um, it wasn't as hard as I expected. I was expecting some more configuration. Um, but this works. I'm excited about this right here. <laughs> this is sick, guys. Um, so yeah, that's how you install the Wi-Fi Link 2 in your drone. It works pretty easily. So next video, we're gonna take this for a flight. I'll put some props on this, fix my OSD, take it for a flight. And yeah, I'll give you my impressions on this Wi-Fi link and a homemade goggles. Dude, so man, there's so much, to, there's so many ideas coming in my head because this is so cheap, affordable. We all have a cell phone. The app does the VR mode. This is like, you can get for like $15. This is a more expensive one like $25 because it actually comes with a remote and everything. I don't even know how to use that. Anyways, so if you want to see my thoughts on this whole thing, hit that subscribe button there for you to be notified whenever I do drop that first flight video and then you'll be the first to see it. So anyways, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video. Peace. This is sick. What? Oh shit. You can change the size, I guess, or something. Wow.